Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Joel with Gameplays Now. Welcome back to the weekend or whenever it is you're watching this. I am so excited to start this new series with you because it is my all-time favorite game. We are going to play Zelda Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64. Now, as you can see on the screen, this is actually the Master Quest Edition that uh, was released on the GameCube. And this was kind of my reintroduction to the Ocarina of Time game. What I mean by that is I did try it out on the Nintendo 64 way back in the day and first impression, didn't like it. Couldn't jump. That was pretty much it. <laughs> Um, but around the time that the Wind Waker uh, was set to release, this Master Quest Edition for the GameCube was uh, uh, an, an available option if you pre-order the game. I really liked what I saw with Wind Waker, so I said, I'll pre-order it and let's try Ocarina of Time again. I fell in love with it. So um, it excites me to no end to finally tackle this game on this channel. It's something I've been wanting to do for ages. So let's just do it. All right, so let's hop right in. Brand new game, brand new file. Ooh, boy. All right, so first things first, we have to name our character, and we're going to name him Link. Sorry, it's just, it's it's what you got to do. And away we go. Start with the three hearts, and uh, in the vast deep forest of Hyrule. Ooh. So... A little background as you're watching this. I mean, if, if you haven't already seen the introduction to Ocarina of Time, what have you been doing for the past, gosh, what is it, 21 years? This game came out in 1998 and was like game of the year on so many fronts. Um, probably uh, uh, greatest Nintendo 64 game of all time. I mean, there's debate there with Mario 64 and GoldenEye and all that, but... Um, as far as just the complexity and depth of a game at this time, during 1998, sort of the height of the Nintendo 64, this was just groundbreaking. Sorry, just I just have to like stop and watch some of this. I used to play this game um, once a year, every year since um, probably 2003, because like I said, I got the Master Quest Edition for the GameCube. Um, as a pre-order bonus for pre-ordering Wind Waker. And I think <laughs> Wind Waker came out and I was like super excited to play it and I played that all the way through, but I kept going back to Ocarina of Time. I like that game more than Wind Waker. Um, so since 2003, I would play that game uh, once a year, the whole way through from start to finish. Um, until about like three or four years ago, I just have not gotten around to playing it. So um, I'm really excited for a couple reasons. One, because this is my favorite game of all time, and two, because it's been, this is probably the longest I've gone without playing this game um, from start to finish. I think a couple years ago I started it up, and then I just, I, you know, it didn't work out. Um, coincidentally enough, before I started this game plays now, channel, um, on my personal YouTube channel, I just toyed around with the idea of doing a Let's Play, and I picked this game. Uh, I actually made four videos released them um but this was before i had like the camera set up it was just my voice playing this game and then i screwed something up i like recorded an hour and lost the file i forget what happened but i just gave up and was like you know what i'm not gonna do it um but ever since then it's like i've been wanting to get back to playing this game um i will say i'm gonna play this game without any strategy guides um which is saying something because i actually have right here this is I bought this. This guy right here. I bought this in a EB Games like way back in the day. Because I, I really wanted to like just dig deep into Ocarina of Time and get all the secrets and all the hearts, gold skull tools, the whole nine yards. And so I kind of got in the habit of just using that every time I played because it's, it's a really well written book. Um, I, I recommend I recommend getting it. Um, it's, I'm not sure what it goes for right now. It's probably a little more expensive than $8 if you get it on eBay, but, uh, it's really well written. Um, the art style is just fantastic. Um, but if you like, if, if you want to get everything in the game, I recommend that book, but I'm not going to use that because it just would make for bad video if I just used a strategy guide for, you know, the whole let's play. So I'm going to do everything I can to collect everything I can. There's no way I'm going to 100% this run. Um, but I, I will try to collect 
what I remember. Um, you know, being the heart pieces, the gold skull tool, is little secrets that I do remember. Because we're talking like, I've played this game from start to finish um, at least 15 times, if not more, probably more. Um, because I said I would play it at least once a year, but during those early years, I probably played it like multiple times in a single year. So, and here we go. We're we're in control of Link. He, uh, if if you saw the intro there, something's going on in Hyrule. Some great evils awoken. Um, and there's our friend Saria. Yahoo! Hi, Link. I have to acclimate myself with these controls. I'm running on a GameCube emulator. Um, just because I, I don't really know how to do the video capture for a system, and I don't have a GameCube anymore. All right, so I do know the first two things we're going to need are a sword and shield, but we're also going to need to collect some rupees, and there's a rupee. So this is like the starting area. This is where you sort of gain your bearings, um, get, uh, get a handle on the controls, the whole, the whole nine yards. So we're going to go in here, and I think this is where we go to get the... Uh, sword. So I think we have to buy the shield. Or is it the other way around? I think the sword's in here. I'm gonna grab that blue one, because that's, that's a solid five. That's a solid five. And I think whatever it is that we need to buy in the shop is like 40 rupees. So we're gonna make sure that we collect everything we can. And let's see, this is our first treasure chest of the game. Yeah, we get our sword. Awesome. Of course, the one thing that's like a royal pain with this game is like you can't fly through the text. I mean, you, you do eventually, but uh, let's see. But a lot of the basic stuff you learn as you go, it's like... You might be a fast reader, but it doesn't matter. All right, so back out we go. Our first objective in the game is to get to the Great Deku Tree, or Deku Tree if you're odd. There probably is a cor correct pronunciation, but I've always called it the Deku Tree. There's going to be a lot of things in this like run that I'm going to probably mispronounce and get on a lot of people's nerves, but I don't care. I'm playing this uh, like I was when I was a teen, and the internet wasn't as big a thing then as far as like knowing all the ins and outs um so you're left to your own devices to like figure out what is how do you pronounce that word so that's just that's what i did and that's what we're gonna do we're up to 23 rupees we need yeah there's 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 that we need 40 and up ahead i think that's where we go to get to the dq tree um but there is is it in here there's a house that we can, yes, 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 yes. There's a house that we can break some pots, and that is exactly what we're going to do. Just because we're horrible, horrible people. 34 rupees, just six more. Oh, what's up? I don't know if I've noticed you. I'm sure I have. My sister took some rupees and went shopping at the store that has a red roof. Tee hee! Speaking of rupees, a green one is worth one, a blue one is worth five, red one is worth 20. Hee hee. It's apparently a riot, I guess. Um, cool thing about this is you can go right back in and... I mean, she just remade those pots in like two seconds flat. We're gonna just go ahead and grab those rupees again. I think, do we get another blue one? Yeah, we do. Man, we could really exploit that, but we're not. We have our 40. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the shield from the building with the red roof. What's a bonus five rupees? Hey Link, look this way. Oh, that's right. I should probably make sure I know my controls. All right, we know the L target. Cool. That's good enough for me. All right, let's just shop from this dude who built his uh, <laughs> who built his countertop too tall. If he's the shop owner, I, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, we're gonna buy that shield because we're gonna need that. We're gonna need, need that for the Deku tree, and that's where we're headed next. Um, there's a lot of other things we can explore in the village, um, but we're not. <laughs> we're not. 
we're gonna we're gonna make sure we explore the things and pursue the things in this game that are of value that kind of move the story along. Oh, let me equip. Let me equip. That'd be embarrassing to actually go right into this with the sword and shield and not have it equipped. You want to see the great Deku tree, you should at least equip a sword and shield. <gasps> and what's that? Oh, you have a Deku shield. And what's that? It's a Kokiri sword. Good grief. So this guy's kind of your rival. Even though the story's not really fleshed out with this dude, he just doesn't like you. And he knows something's up. He's like, you're not one of us. Just a little foreboding. Because everyone in this village is a kid and will remain a kid until they die. Just because that's... They're people, that's who they are. Which, if you know anything about this game, spoiler alert, Link, the main character you play as, uh, becomes an adult much later in the game. So, Navi, who's the fairy that's following us that you see floating around on the screen, uh, she was selected to summon Link to bring him back to the DQ tree. And check out this dude. He's got, like, the eyebrows and the mustache. And boy, oh boy, if you want to read how he speaks, I mean, it's like Shakespearean, sort of. Like Nintendo's version of being Shakespearean, which I don't know if that even is, but... He's going to tell a story about evil. Um... Nightmares the whole nine yards. Verily thou hast felt it. I... Time has come for you to test your courage. I've been cursed. Oh, sorry to hear that. Did you try taking some Benadryl for that curse? No? All right, we're just going to keep Shakespearing this thing. That's cool. Do you... Oh, sorry. Dost thou have courage enough to undertake take this? Yes. You can select no, but it still kind of forces you through. I don't know. I guess they like making you feel like you have a choice in this game. Which, because of the fact that the dialogue just goes directly to where it wants it to, it kind of negates the whole argument of whether or not Ocarina of Time is an RPG. It's not an RPG. Some people say it's an RPG. I've heard it before. Maybe not a lot of people. Anyway, it's like action adventure. It's Zelda. Well, some of the later games kind of, like, dive into the RPG elements, but this game is not one of them. So this is, like, the first dungeon of the game. Um, you have to collect... I don't think there's keys. Are there keys in this one? There's things that you want to collect. Um, so we're going to get the DQ stick. That's going to come in handy. Okay, so let's see. If I'm using an emulator, do I have the C-Stick set with the controller I'm using? We're about to find out. Let's see. Um, we do. Cool. All right, that's good. That's good. And I think we're going to get some... No, we're going to get some rupees there. That's fine. That's not what I was thinking we were going to get, but... Look at this wall, the vines growing on it, give it a rough surface. Maybe you can climb it. Like, you could have just summed all that up by saying, hey, this wall, climb it. Or we could have figured it out on our own because it's a video game, we're not dumb. But that's kind of the role of Navi in this entire game is to make you feel like you don't know how to play a video game. So we could go up there, but we would get demolished right away, so we're not. But we are gonna open this. Always open those treasure chests. Not always. I think there's some later that you don't want to open. Anyway, dungeon map. That um, you probably, as the viewer of this video, can't see because my face is covering the map. So I get to see the map, but you don't. <laughs> it was either that or like cover up the hearts or the rupees or the stuff that happens in the top right. Yeah, of like what I have equipped. I figured I'd put my face in the bottom right. Sorry if you're a map person just it is what it is. Alright, let's take this guy out with our shield, and we're gonna chase him down. I think we just have to touch him. Nope. Alright, it's a little more involved than that, I guess. Maybe if we keep our shield out, and then there we go. Forgive me. I'll give you a clue if you let me go. When you jump off a high cliff, if you hold forward, you will roll... See, in the context of him talking to Link, like, he's saying, like, hey, if you push forward on the joystick, like, Link's gotta be thinking, what are you talking about? I mean, I get it. He's talking to me as the player, but it's just always weird when, like, characters explain specific controls 
in the game. It just kind of breaks uh, breaks up the story a little bit. All right, so this is where we get, I think, the slingshot. It's like our first sub weapon. I think it's. I think it is. Yeah, slingshot. All right. It's gonna tell us how to use the slingshot, but we already know. Oh, do I even have any DQ seeds to use the slingshot? Hopefully it comes equipped with some. Oh, it does. Sweet. So I'm gonna flip the camera around. We're gonna Z target and flap. Shooting a seed at a ladder is gonna cause it to fall from the web and just align itself perfectly with. Even though we like have DQ seeds, it's gonna tell us that we collected them. That's good. Any any time that you collect an item for the first time in the game, it makes a big old deal about it, and then the second time and every time thereafter, it's like ah, forget it. We don't care that you found this. All right. Um, onward and upward, as they say. I'm gonna take you out. And then I think. Use of the controls here, even for the GameCube, which again I'm running on an emulator. It shouldn't be too different. I'm actually using <laughs> I'm I'm running a GameCube emulator on Windows OS using an Xbox 360 Windows controller, so we get a little bit of everything. Um But again, when this game came out for GameCube, it was like we're gonna just slap a Nintendo 64 game on a GameCube disc. So they didn't really do much to like improve the controls so everything's a little jerky when you're trying to like line up a shot with a slingshot but it's kind of the charm of the game I guess all right so we have all right we got this so let's go ahead and light this up I can't quite remember what that does all right that just unlocks the door so we can get out of here at any time and I think, do we get our first gold skull tola? Can't remember. Maybe not quite yet. This, I believe, is our first compass. So in every dungeon, you get a map, and a big chest, and a compass, and a big chest, which helps you see on the map that <laughs> you, as the viewer, can't really see where things are, um, where treasure chests might be. You can drop. That's fine. Because I think I do want to go up there. I'll take you out. Ouch. This is an item that we will probably never use as a DQ nut. It's basically the Zelda version of a flashbang grenade. <laughs> Which is fun to go like, hey, let's, let's put a grenade in this game. And like, someone higher up was like, mm, we probably shouldn't do that. And they're like, well, what if we make a seed and just like explode in a flash? And the developers were like, all right, let's do that. All right, so that was, that's like our first collectible in the game. That was a gold skull tool. There's 100 in the whole game. And I think for every 20 you collect, um, you get something, which we'll get to that later in a later video because there's no way we're going to get to uh, that part in this video. So now we have everything we need to move on to the basement. We're going to take this guy out with one of these. It's a one-hit KO if you just do a jump attack. And now we're going to just jump. And our momentum is going to break through the web, and bam. All right, let's take these guys out. This part's, um, this is where it becomes a little less linear. Where you have to do a little bit of thinking for it again next. Um, oh, we definitely want that guy. Let's... Oh, the controls. It takes some getting used to. It's okay, though. Let's go up there and grab that. It's another gold skull tula. Again, I'm pronouncing the terms the way I heard them in my head when I played this game for the first time. Again, like, the, well, the first time was around 2002. A little bit more of a back history. I borrowed uh, a friend's Nintendo 64, which I think I wound up keeping. And 
played this game a little bit. That actually was not the first time I played it. I think the first time I played it was at a friend's house. And I was like, this game looks really cool, but I don't know what's going on. And then once I got this game on the Nintendo 64 and played it there, I was still like, I, it's, it's a little cooler, but I just still didn't like the whole I can't jump factor. So I didn't get very far in the game. Um, but then when I realized, like, all right, you need to get off your Mario high horse and <laughs> just play the game for what it is, it made a lot more sense. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I think, like, if you were to jump in this game, it would just make it a really weird game. Okay, there we go. Light that on fire. We're gonna lose one of our sticks, but that's okay. If you put the stick back in your inventory, you don't lose it. If you just let it keep burning and then it burns out, you lose the stick. Alright, let's take this dude out. He's gonna give us another hint. Please forgive me, Master. I'll never do it again. If you spare me, I'll teach you something cool. You will never beat my brothers up ahead. Unless you punish them in the proper order. The order is 2, 3, 1. 23 is number 1. <laughs> It's funny because I have a feeling like, like if they didn't say that, that's how most people would like when they're like two, three, one, two, three, like twenty three, one. Twenty three is number one. But the fact that they went the extra mile and were like, we're just gonna say that in the dialogue. It's just I don't know. It's kinda funny. Alright, here we have like our first timed sequence. We're gonna go in the water, we're gonna get a little wet, we're gonna dive down. <sighs> yes, thank you, Navi. character you just love to hate. Oh, am I lined up here? Yes. Alright. So we got a quick scooch on back to here before we run out of time. There we go. And we are just small enough to squeeze under this death trap. Seriously, no wonder this tree has a bellyache. There's all this stuff that's happening in it. Take you out. And we're going to get another prompt from Navi about standing next to blocks, grabbing them, and moving them. You can push it and pull it. If you stand next to the block and press A while pressing you know, the block, you can climb the top of it. And then she has the nerve to say, pay attention to what the action icon... Well, okay. Well, you just told me everything that the action icon will do when I'm standing next to a block, so one can assume that if I see the action icon appear next to something else, that I would do what it says. It's all good though. I love this game. You're gonna hear me complain a lot about certain things and make fun of certain things, but um, no, this this game. I this I've never played any other game more than I played this game, and there's a reason. For it. It's just so so good. And yeah, the controls are not as fluid as literally any other game out there right now, but. Um, doesn't matter. Would I like them to re-release this game on the Switch with like updated graphics and controls? Absolutely. But if they um, just released this game in its current state, I'd be just as happy. Right, let's take this guy out. A little secret here. Um, we couldn't run ahead. But we'd run into issues with these things where they'd drop and we'd have to fight some spider things. We're gonna try to dispatch them. Wow, I'm gonna like lose all of my. We're gonna have a super fun time when we get to the boss of this dungeon. I mean, just a tiny little, like, tap on the joystick, and this just goes everywhere. Alright. But that does save us a battle, even though we just blasted through 13 seeds. Let's find us another one. Alright, so this is the first area where it hints towards future backtracking. So, here, oh, I'll just burn it down. We have this web here that we can burn down. And you're like, oh, wow, what's the secret back here? We've got this, you know, PD Piranha that we're going take care of. And we're like, oh, cool, well, we got a stick, but why? And you're like, oh, wait, that wall looks like it might be bombable! Um, but we don't have bombs. So, 
you know, we'll put a pin in that, because there's something back there. But we don't get bombs until, like, probably two more videos from now. Where, where did you put that fiery stick? You just put it back in your pocket, and then... I won't question it. It's just a game. Alright, so here... Not that we need to. I would just I would just do this just because... Oh no, you do have to do it. I always thought like you put this here as a way to get back and forth to where you were from, but I think you do actually need this to um, light the stick on fire. I, might be, I don't think we can do it anywhere else. I don't think we can do it up here because you need to like, set up high. We'll get a couple more sticks just because it's probably a good idea to have them. But yeah, I don't think we can... We can't light them from there. That's that's why we have to move that block. That's fine. But it does serve as a way to like get back to other areas. If for some reason you wanted to explore areas you just were. I don't know. We're going to burn those webs up and put the stick away and drop down to the final area. We're getting close, y'all. Alright, here comes that 23 is number one nonsense. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Here we go. Two. Three. And... Come here. One. Alright, and this guy's going to tell us how to beat the queen. I'm going to reveal the secret of Queen Goma to you. Um, which, I mean, is kind of nice, but... I don't know. It's like it's the first boss and you're gonna tell me how to beat it. Whatever, that's fine. Now the trick to beating the boss is to take her down before like her little spawn comes out. And hopefully we can do that, but it's been a little while since I last played this, so we'll see how this goes. This part, oh man. One of the first couple of times playing this game, it like freaked me out because we're like, alright, there's clearly a massive spider in this room. It's dark. The only way you see it is if you equip this and look up at its eye, and then it looks back at you, and you're like, oh, crud. Boom. Here we go. All right. I already stunned it with the... Uh... All right, we need to just... Sorry, I'm like starting sentences and not finishing them. We need to keep it Z-targeted, and as long as we do that, we should be able to take it out before it drops its little babies on us. Come on. There we go. Do some jump attacks. That's the quicker way to defeat her. Oops. Ah, we could have... We could have ended it right there. We'll end it, though. We'll keep her Z-targeted. Until she stops. Gets that crazy look in her eyes. And this should do it. Yeah. One boss down. I like it. And she just dissolves away. Just like, you know, whenever you use your slingshot and sword on a spider, that's what that does. And we're going to get our first heart container maximum life energy is increased by one heart your life energy will totally be filled I like it let's get out of here so there we go that's like the first part of the game we just knocked out like the introduction we knocked out the starting little village and the first dungeon um, let's go ahead and just like get through the little story that's going to happen here just so we don't have to start with a story in the next video uh yeah we got a little more shakespearean dying tree on us <sighs> um now i have yet uh can we just say no no link you must know my time is short all right well if you're gonna die and you want to tell me a story then fine here's the story of the wicked man of the desert we got cast the drip curse upon him Look at these fire graphics. 
Yes. I'm sorry, like, I know Ganondorf's, like, the big bad dude, but he looks like a big bad dude, like, in the cool way, too, you know? Evil man ceaselessly uses his vile sorcerous powers in his search for this. Who writes this? They're like, hey, this is gonna be for kids. And the kids will read it. I honestly don't know if, like, my kids take the time to read. Of course, I only have, like, one kid right now who's played Ocarina of Time. But I'm just, I'm looking at this and I'm reading it and I'm like, ugh. But then again, if you've never played the game, and you can put up with the just crazy way things are worded, it does, this, this game does a decent job of storytelling. Even if it's just executed in a bizarre way. This is basically like the story of creation <laughs> in Zelda. Um, instead of one god, you've got three gods who they each have a certain power that. Alright, so like Din. With her strong flaming arm, she cultivated the land and created the red earth. Cool. Alright, so we've got the earth. Nehru. Uh, gave the spirit of law to the world. In other words, the sky, I guess. And light. And this one, whose name I always butcher, Ferrari. Sort of sounds like Ferrari. Um, put uh, cars and Ferraris and um, Cadillacs in the world. Nah, I'm just playing. And then they converged and they blew up into the sky and they turned into a Triforce, which is kind of like the whole central power of every Zelda game there is. The sacred triangles have become the basis of the world's providence. The resting place of the triangles has become the sacred realm, so wherever those triangles are is the sacred realm, which I guess is this area where it's sort of drizzling. I don't know. Ah, uh, but you must never allow the desert man in black armor to lay his hands on the sacred triforce. You must never, I'm just speaking normal English here, you can't let the man with the evil heart enter the sacred realm. Just don't do it. I mean, it's gonna happen, but don't do it. That evil man, uh, he put a curse on me. Sat my power. Bummer. Because that curse, my end is nigh. Though your valiant efforts to break the curse were successful, I was doomed before you started. Seriously, Nintendo, if you want to remake this thing, I will... I'll do the voice for the tree. That's, that's cool. I'll do it. I will do it for free. But maybe pay me because you're Nintendo and you've got loads of cash. Alright, that was a fun story. Link's like, you should be dying. Hyrule Castle will be our next stop, but that will, won't be until like the next video or so. Uh, we're gonna take this stone. I don't get it. Like, I feel like Ganondorf probably could have gone in the tree and done all that and gotten the stone, but whatever. It's cool. Listen, it's a sacred stone, and the evilest man wants it, but you go ahead and just hold it over your head and let it spin around, because it's, it's cool and dramatic. And sparkly, shiny, so pretty. Alright, so we got the stone. The first stone. First stone of three. Alright, yes, we're courageous. Navi, the fairy, help Link to carry out my will. I entreat. Uh oh. He's sputtering his words. Oh, now this part is just sad. Oh, Tiku Tree's dead. Bummer. Starting this video off with a death. <laughs> Goodbye, Great Deku Tree. I oh, know that's Navi saying that's the tree, not the tree saying it to himself. All right. So that's that's that. Let's let's get back through here real quick, so we can hear him blame the death of the tree on us. Hey Link, what did you do? The Great Deku Tree? Did he did he die? How did you know that if you're just standing this whole time? How could you do? You think I killed the tree. Man, you're an idiot. 
you deserve a high five to the face with a chair. <laughs> On that note, that's going to do it for the first video. Um, like I said, this is my all-time favorite game, so I'm super excited to make these videos, and hopefully they turn out fun. Um, I was so excited that I just redid the whole introductory video for our channel um, to reflect Zelda. Well, the other one did Zelda too, but this one's even more Zelda. Anyway, um, I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please leave a like. Consider subscribing. That's what really helps my channel out. Um, there's a Facebook page in the uh, description below, so check that out. I upload stuff there daily, and there's other videos on this channel, so peruse around. You know, Check it out. Tell me what you like. Tell me what we don't like. Comment below. I will comment back, because that's how I roll. Um, so that's all I got. So until next time, see ya.